It's July 30th, 2009. It's another installment from Edible Acres. I think I'm sticking with that name. Uh, today I wanted to show a brief introduction, hopefully brief, of my new water catchment system. There it is, two gallons. No, just kidding. Uh, so this is after a bunch of trials and a bunch of experiments. This is my newest approach and I want to talk about it. I think I've come up with a way of doing it where you can filter your water uh, and put it into a series of containers. This storage is actually a little shy of 300 gallons as I'll show you in a moment. But you can see the downspout from uh, the shed here and I don't know the actual dimensions of the roof but in a good downpour it'll catch at least 20 to 40 gallons I would say. I uh, did that all through June. But you can see I cut the downspout and it goes to this uh, bucket that I painted black, not for any particular reason, that was for another project. And into it, I've inserted a uh, Poland spring bottle that has holes punched at the bottom, so this can catch all leaf litter and debris, whatnot. Um, and then it goes to a three-quarter inch threaded MPT to two five-eighths inch barbs. I'll talk about those parts in a moment. Uh, and then it attaches here to scrap hose. Uh, the top hose will eventually go over to the system as well. But you can see the yellow line, if we follow it here, that at some point would be nice to have propped up. But it comes back to the actual water catchment system. It's still in its early stages. There's a lot more refining to be done. But you get the gist of it, maybe. Um, this is six 55-gallon drums. The first drum you can see was last night's storm and a little bit of test water that I put in. Uh, that yellow line from the catch, where it's filtered, comes down and dumps into the top here. Let's take a look at that. Uh, and then that connects in series. Again, 5 eighths inch, I'm sorry, 3 quarter inch threaded. I bore a hole with a, a 1 inch drill bit into the top of these bungs. Uh, and th with uh, Teflon tape threaded these in and you can see they're attached to scrap hose. That's where the yellow line of water comes into the system and then down at the bottom it goes in two directions. It either comes out this way which goes to a little guy. Eventually I'm going to attach this to a ton of hose that goes and feeds these gardens with drip tape but I've got it split so that I have the option of pulling water directly from here. It's a tiny bit leaky. I'm not super happy with that, but it's not bad. It's a few drips an hour. And I figure wherever there are drips in the system, I can put freshly potted plants underneath it. For the most part, it's pretty leak-free, but I might as well take advantage of any leaks that do come up, uh, and fresh cuttings and transplants and such can be living underneath here. And you see what happens is it basically, with pieces of scrap hose, it's all the same component. Three quarter inch threaded MPT to a T of five eighths inch barb. Depending on the hose you have, this is standard hose, so it's five eighths inch barb. Um, and I notice that I don't even have to use um, hose clamps on these because the fit is really tight. It's actually very difficult to take off, so it saves a lot of money. These components, I think, were 59 cents a piece. Uh, the hose was free. The 55 gallon drums I paid $14 a piece for, but I think I could have done a lot better if I had found them somewhere local. Um, but it's still a good deal. These are all food grade. It smells like vanilla because these are all vanilla extract. Um, and you get the idea. It basically flows in to this first one. Over time, they all equalize. Uh, all of the top bungs are loosened enough so that there's air flow available, otherwise it'll be pressured, it wouldn't work right. Um, and as rain comes in, fills this one, and then it'll slowly equalize. You can see the water line in the rest of these. This was overnight, uh, the first rain, that it's actually just starting to equalize out. I would think if a heavy downpour happened, this one would fill up pretty quickly. I'm interested to see how that behaves. Uh, and it would be a little while before these all equalize out. Uh, you notice the the first one, the main one, is lower than the rest so that there's an overflow. Eventually this will go to uh, probably a hundred or two hundred foot long hose that comes out, is just slightly buried underground and runs all the way downhill here, very faintly downhill, 
but to a pond that I'll install back in there. I'll hand dig a pond either in that area or over there where it's downslope, very rich soil to begin with, and it can accommodate that overflow. And then eventually, if that overflows, have it hit a small cut that I dug that follows contour and dumps out to the street and goes away. So just from the one half of this garage, I would think uh, in the rains of May and June, that should be quite full and be able to accommodate any overflow issues. Um, and eventually, I could put another one, two, three, four, five on top if I wanted. Uh, this should be stable enough. These two end pieces are both filled with water, and they are 800 pounds, I think, maybe a little bit more. Was it 8 pounds per gallon, and they're 55-gallon drums. Um, so they hold the whole system there. Likewise, that one down at that end, I'll fill with rainwater uh, when this system is filled up, I'll get that one full so that it's holding everything. Um, and then I can use them in the fall if I wanted to, just dump them out or thread in a little hose that runs to the garden and do a real heavy irrigation. So that's the system. Let's talk about the parts real briefly. So these are the little components that I've been using in this system. I sourced all of these from a company called Green Leaf Inc. Uh, G-R-N Leaf I-N-C dot com not necessarily plugging them but so far they're the one manufacturer that I found that has all the miscellaneous parts uh, at all the sizes that I want and the prices are amazing <laughs> I guess I am plugging them because they manufacture their own stuff uh, but anyway some of the things that I used and this may or may not be useful to you uh, let's see this is the main component like I was saying before, this is a three-quarter inch threaded MPT. I don't know what MPT, male part thread, I guess. Um, that's what's going into the tops of the bungs once I drill a tiny hole through uh, or seven-eighths inch or a one-inch hole through the bung cap. I can then thread this in with Teflon tape. And because the hoses have a five-eighths inch inner diameter, I'm using these T-barbs that are at five-eighths inch. If you have larger hose, you can find half inch or such. Main component here, and then the hose I find for free by asking on free cycle. Uh, so far I've gotten probably three or four hundred feet. Um, you can see here's another little one. If you're at the end, you only need one three quarter inch MPT to uh, a five eighths inch barb again. And then with uh, throughout the hose system, I plan on doing like a simulated drip tape from scrap hose. I've got these, these are called menders. It's a 5 8 inch on either side, so I can plug scrap hose, boink, boink, if I want to make them longer. Or if there's a cut in it, I can cut the two on either side of the cut and mend it with these. Uh, and then this one is a T that's all 5 8 inch, so I can start connecting all the hoses in series. You get the idea, I hope. And then this is a little splitter. You might be able to find a better one at a hardware store, I'm not sure. These were about $4 a piece. Uh, and the rest of these, I think, were 50 cents, 29 cents, something like that, to 75 cents. They're all less than a dollar. Uh, so this whole thing cost me, I think, $50 in all these parts, but that's enough to probably rig up maybe two or 3,000 gallons worth of water catchment. Um, anyway, hope that's useful to you, and have fun.